If this gets 100 likes, I will review to Mad Cat's um, Rat 8 Plus. Hopefully, I don't have to do that, but maybe I will. Who knows? Now, time for the montage. Welcome to a review of the Mad Cat's Rat um, 2 Plus. This is a sort of budget mouse from Mad Cat's that has no side buttons, is ambidextrous, but weighs 67 grams, has a weird design. And this is similar to the Rat 1 Plus, but the Rat 1 Plus, the difference is that the Rat 1 Plus has a worse sensor and has no RGB, but it's also about 10 grams lighter. So I guess it just depends on what you want. If you just really want a light mouse and you don't care about sensor, then that might be worth a look, but they generally cost about the same, so I didn't see any reason to buy that over this. So, yeah. So, some backstory on Mad Cats. Mad Cats was founded in, I believe, 1989, and they used, they started out maybe mostly making um, stuff for consoles, but eventually they ended up making gaming mice, and they made, they were generally more budget-orientated mice, um, but some people did really like them. However, Mad Cats went bankrupt in 2017, like Chapter 7, so that company no longer exists. But then, in like 2018, they were bought back out by a firm that used to make Mad Cats mice, and then those guys started making Mad Cats products again. It does seem like they mostly just make like OEM sort of controllers and um, like fight sticks now, but the mice and keyboards still seem to be somewhat unique. And they ended up releasing this line in either 2018 or 2019 um, with the One Plus line, or the Plus line, um, which included the Mad Cat's Rat One Plus, the Two Plus, the Four Plus, the Six Plus, the Eight Plus, and they also made um, the Rat Pro X3 and the Rat Pro S3 and along some other mice. So yeah, that is some background for Mad Cat's in case anyone is wondering, like, oh yeah, but I thought I, they went bankrupt, they must still make mice, yep, they still do. Um, they're not as relevant as they might have used to been at one point, but yeah, they do make mice. They do make some interesting uh, mice that I think are worth a look, but they're kind of expensive. But if this video does well, I think I'll review I'll review some of their mice, some of their other mice. So yeah. So the weight of this mouse is about 67, 68 grams, which is what Mad Cat's quotes and what I weighted at. Which is good. Um, I'm gonna. Here's a chart of all the um, sort of budget under thirty dollar mice um, and their weights here. As you can see on the chart, the Rat One Plus and the Rat Two Plus are very low in terms of weight. It is true that these mice are also a lot smaller than some of the mice in that list. But yeah, if you want 
very cheap um, ultralight mice, then these are worth uh, somewhat of a look if you really care about weight. Um, these don't have side buttons, rest of the mice do though, and the rest of the mice might have better sensors, but that's not really relevant to weight, so yeah. Okay, now shape-wise on this mouse, it is really unique, probably most similar to maybe the Corsair, I believe it's M65, mostly because of these weens um, that aren't really seen on any other mouse. And then um, it also has most of the back section cut out, and you grip it not towards the thinnest point. Um, you grip it actually towards kind of where the screws are, honestly, is where I tend to grip it. I don't know about, maybe some people might grip it closer. Some people might grip it way over here, but at that point, it's not really all that comfortable. But I'd say the natural grip is going to be around where the screws are. So it's actually a pretty wide mouse we measure there, which means a lot of people would be able to use this just fine. Now, the shape, um, at least in terms of grips, it's... Obviously, as you might be able to tell, it's really um, it's just a slope, and there isn't really much of a hump. And if you um, put the hump in the, to the maximum, or like in, and this is how it comes out of the box, then um, you, palm grip is basically impossible. Um, claw grip is um, possible as long as you don't use the back for um, palm support, and fingertip will be fine. Um, with this extended, you can do a kind of do claw with palm support. You can't, still can't really palm grip because you'll just end up tilting the mouse backwards. <laughs> not not really a great design in that regard. But at least you do have the adjustable back. That is that is better than most gaming mice. Although I do wish you also had adjustable sides as well. But you don't. And shape-wise, I would say this is one of the most unique mouse mice on the market. And it's a pretty solid shape. So, yeah. So with the shape of the mouse, um, the, um, the Mad Cat's rats to it, it's quite a bit shorter than the MM710 and G203 when the hump is um, all the way pressed in, but when it's pressed out a bit, you can tell it's about the same size as them. And the MM710 and G203 are pretty tiny. It gets some bigger mice. You can see that it, this is a pretty small mouse even with the hump pulled out, but it's not like super duper tiny. So here's a size comparison. The sensor on this mouse is a PAW or a PM, I think it's a PAW 3325 or maybe a PMW, which means the tracking is going to be not flawless, but it's going to be okay. You probably you probably won't have this like spinning out constantly in game, but LOD is a little higher than I'd want. Um, it's not like the worst ever, but it's definitely a lot higher than most other mice. Um, so. Yeah, that's basically kind of the 3325 sensor summed up. It's not a, it's not a horrible sensor, but it is the lowest that I can comfortably use. Um, if you have any sensors that are any worse than that, reliability becomes a huge concern, and I don't really like using that. So, yeah. The cable and feet on this mouse are somewhat of, or, okay, the cable is a rubber cable. It's, you can tell it's sort of flexible, but also not really. It's fairly long. Actually, yeah, that seems just about average for a mouse cable. Um, it reminds me a lot of, like, the G203 cable. Like, it's a rubber, sort of flexible cable, but I would have preferred, like, a decent braided cable, especially on a mouse this light. Feet, on the other hand, um, they're really weird shape, so if you have to get an aftermarket feet on this, you're gonna have a hard time. And they don't, they're, they have okay-ish glide. Um, not great. And they have a fair bit of friction. They're they're okay though. Uh, cable and feet are both okay. Could be better. Could be worse. And the software of this mouse. Um, people did complain about it. I didn't really have any major problems with it. Um, so you can set um, like short cuss keys and stuff. And so how you do it is you give all this stuff here, and then you drag it upwards into the thing and then you can set um, quite a few macros. It can do a lot of stuff, but yeah, this isn't the greatest setup software. And you have the DPI, which annoyingly you can't like set it to just like one, um, oh, you can actually, so you switch pulling right there. And you can also have a DPI switch, which I turned off. And Chameleon is the RGB. I don't personally think the RGB is that great. 
it only adjusts for this back half and you can set um, you can make it breathing you can make it no effect and then if you press apply so now you can see it's green but now it's not breathing and it, if the RGB looks really dim on camera it looks even worse in real life so that is one issue with it and it doesn't really seem to do white well in RGB if we go check for that and let's apply this is this is when I set it to white <laughs> like that's just, it looks way redder on camera to be fair but it's not really white it looks like pink if we're being very generous RGB implementation in software could be better but I didn't have any major issues with it um, I got this mouse from Beach Audio but um, you can actually get these off Amazon I would personally probably just look around on the website out of like the authorized retailers and just buy wh whichever is the cheapest this mouse was $26 from Beach Audio which was the cheapest most of their places were selling it for about 30 to 31 my conclusion to this mouse would be that it was it was very interesting to use um, it didn't really get anything majorly wrong but it isn't necessarily a mouse I would fully suggest to anyone either it's really sort of a more niche mouse but for $25, if you just really want something ultra lightweight without holes and you like don't want to have like a Viper Mini or something like that and you kind of want to get something that's a bit more creative, this mouse is definitely worth a bit of a look. Now, there are definitely better mice for this price, so you can get the Razer Viper Mini for about $30. You can get um, the G203 for about that price. Basically, any mouse from any major company is going to be better than this. But this mouse did surprise me. I thought there would be a lot more wrong with it, but it really wasn't. I did enjoy using it. And if you buy this, you might enjoy using it as well. So if you have the money and you're looking for a mouse, this might be worth, this might be worth a shot. But um, yeah, thanks for watching and bye.